worship here at First Church of the Brethren in Roaring Spring for April, oh, I'm sorry, May. We're into the May flowers that the showers from April have been bringing. I've been listening to Patty's children's stories. I've been trying to do, a, a, getting into a better habit of wearing my mask when, when I need to be. And as you know, our whole series for the last couple weeks, and, and for this week and next week also, we're talking about some of the spiritual habits that we need to be reinforcing or at least and starting if we're going to come out of this stay-at-home time much better. So we have a uplifting worship for you today. Thanks for dropping in. Hi, friends. Well, I want you to get a little bit closer. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. One of our new habits is not to get too close. It's called social distancing. Have you heard that from your parents or from a big person? Well, all it means is that you are not to get too close together with someone else, unless you're in your house. And I brought a friend with me, right over there. His name is Mr. Bear. And he is six feet away from me. Well, that's how far we're supposed to be if we go out in public. But I want to tell you something. That is only for the big people. You need to be safe. So when you go out in public, you need to stay together with the big person that you are with. That's for safety. And we're all very sad about being away from people. Maybe you don't get to play baseball, or maybe you don't get to go to a birthday party, or maybe not even get to see your grandma or Patty. But this is a forever, and I want to tell you about somebody who wasn't very good with social dis distancing. His name is Jesus. And I learned all about Jesus right here in my Bible. And by going to Sunday school and to going to Bible church in the summertime, vacation Bible school, well, Jesus was not good at social distancing because he loved people. And he helped many, many people by healing them. And by healing them, he had to touch them. And he had to be close to them. And he also talked to people and he taught them how to follow God's laws. So, when you are thinking about being inside and social distancing, think about Jesus because he loves you. And he was not a good social distancer, but that's what we have to do for now. And it will not last forever. So let's bow our heads for a little prayer. Dear Lord, we are sad about having to social distance and not seeing our friends, and not seeing our family. But we know you want us to be safe. So thank you for keeping us safe this week, and please watch over us. In your name, amen. I don't know if you noticed last week, but every time I was taking my mask off last week, I ripped my glasses off too. So definitely I'm getting better with practice. There are several prayer concerns that we'd like to call to your attention, several joys and concerns that we'd like to share before we go in prayer. A uh, couple new things this week. Mike and Crystal Burns welcome their second child this week, a daughter, Haley Dawn, on Wednesday. Uh, everyone is doing fine. Uh, we had a, a prayer concern come out of our Wednesday evening Bible study for Drusilla, who is looking at or had major back surgery earlier this week. Dan Blau continues to uh, wait a, a lung transplant. And then we, of course, have our, our, our usual ones that have been included in the bullet 
Middleton, uh, Bill Hagstrom, John Coates, Russell Johnson, Carl Hoover, Barbara Rausch, uh, those from our congregation in the military, Matt, Lexi, Gino, for Carol Emmerich, continuing healing, for Jake Yingling, Eugene McKinney is in an apartment at Homewood now, and as always, as always, we want to continue to lift up essential workers and first responders, the, the heroes that are out there making sure that we can live as close to normal as possible. your son Jesus Christ gives to us each and every day and we thank you for the example that the early disciples also provide for us through the scriptures we know that they devoted themselves to prayer to the teachings of the Apostles and Jesus and to the sharing of the bread of life but as part of that Lord they were a people of prayer whose faith spilled outward to all around them they shared their joys and their concerns, their passions and their sorrows with one another and with you. May that also be an example for us. As we continue to study the dis disciplines and the habits that we should start and reinforce to bring us closer to you and to help make the new normal a better normal, may we include these outward disciplines as well. May we share our burdens. May we share our joys. May we serve one another to follow your example. Father, we've listed several individuals from the congregation and those that are close to members of the congregation who are experiencing health and physical and emotional and maybe spiritual discomfort. But we look to you for hope, for healing. Father, there are many blessings that we enjoy even in these times. The blessings of what the first responders and what those who are on the front lines are doing for us. And the blessing of being able to spend more time with family. And especially, Lord, we thank you for the blessings of being able to establish these habits to bring us closer to you. May your spirit guide us in this hour of worship and continue with us in the coming week so that we may serve you and be a light shining to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture for the message this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verse 35, which says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. I couldn't find a simple answer to this question online, so I'm looking for some help here. Are we wearing these masks to protect, to protect ourselves from other people who might have the virus, or are we wearing these to protect them from us? Even if it's a 50-50 proposition, you might not be surprised to know that I'm thinking that it's a that these masks are a good example of what we're talking about today and what this, this scripture is telling us. It shows 
by us wearing these masks that we're looking out for other people. That we are disciples because we're showing our love for other people. Because that's the this this scripture is talking about. Loving one another. And as we've defined love in the past, love is not an emotion. The love we're talking about as Christians is not an emotional feeling. It's a love that's making a decision to do what's best for others. Even if we don't like them, even if we don't know them, by wearing the mask, we're doing what's best for other people, those people that are around us. Maybe we're actually protecting them, but at very least we're helping to protect their fears and helping them to feel a little bit more secure. Sure, I, I, I know. I know that not everyone who wears a mask is a Christian. So we may have a little more, bit more work to, for us to show that we love one another. But we've said all along, as long as we've been involved in these online sermons, we've talked about how one of the positive things that can come out of this situation is that we do a better job taking care of each other. And that's the kind of love that Jesus is talking about in this scripture. I know what you're thinking. I can read your mind through the camera. Well, no, not really. But I know what you're thinking. Your next question is going to be, but Dave, I don't like my mask. My glasses fog up. Well, that's why I don't wear one when I drive. And you're concerned that people can't see how pretty you are and what a nice smile you have. I, I have the same concerns. Well, no, no, I don't have the same concerns. I'm kind of glad to wear one so people don't have, don't have to look at me. But your question is going to be, I don't like my mask, Dave. Is it really that important that people know we are Christians? Is it really that important that people know we follow Jesus Christ? Well, our scripture, God's word, says that it is. So I'm going to go with yes. It's important. Well, I know what your next question is going to be. Your next question is going to be, wouldn't it be a whole lot easier if we just tell them that we love them? Why can't we just say it rather than show it? Well, we all know how that would go, don't we? Matthew 5, 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see, not hear, that they may see, your good deeds, and glorify your Father in heaven. And I can't get out of here without quoting this, the, the book of James. James chapter 1, 22 says, Be doers of the word, not just hearers. Or in the case we're talking about, be, be doers of the word, not just speakers of what the word says. Before we go any further, let me remind you, what our definition of this agape love has always been. It's making this conscious decision to do what's best for others, even if we don't know them, maybe even if we don't like them. To represent Jesus Christ and to show that we are his disciples, we're called to love other people. And another point that needs to be made. And, and let me just be perfectly honest with you. It would be nice if I could sit here and tell you that if this, in a perfect world, our motives would be all intrinsic. We would love just because we love. Uh, I don't know if any of you have ever seen the movie Jerry Maguire. It's about a sports agent who represents a guy and gets him this huge multi-million dollar contract. And as soon as he gets the guy the contract, he just goes around talking about how he loves everyone. He's so overcome with emotion. I just love everyone. In a perfect world, we would all be like that. But it's not always a perfect world. C.S. Lewis once challenged us to behave not in a certain way to try to get into heaven, but to act in that way because there's a little bit of heaven already in us. In a perfect world, that's how what our motives would be. But sometimes, sometimes, 
What's the old saying? We have to fake it till we make it. Or as Norman Vincent Peale used to say, we have to act as if. We have to act like we love one another sometimes. And if you do that often enough, if we pray that one day unity, as a song we're going we're gonna to have a couple people sing here a little bit later, talks about, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We will work side by side, no matter what our motives are. If we can do that, people will know we are Christians by our love. We're continuing our series today of the spiritual disciplines, these habits. I, I, I keep saying spiritual disciplines because that's my way of giving credit to a man named Richard Foster who first wrote the book we've kind of been using as, as a model here. But I like the term habits. These habits we build so that we can make sure we're not wasting this time that we're stuck inside. And for the last couple of weeks, we talked about inward disciplines. Today, we're going to talk about what he calls outward disciplines. Simplicity, solitude, submission, and service. But to me, every single one of them can be summed up by saying, as Christians, we're called to love one another. It's kind of ironic if we're going to talk about simplicity for just a minute here. It's ironic because to talk about simplicity becomes very complicated. Because simplicity means so many things to so many different people. One of our Wednesday evening Bible studies a couple weeks ago focused on this. And it was evident even within the group we had online for Wednesday. There are some people that say to live a simple life means to follow the teaching of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount and not be concerned about anything. They say living a simple life is to trust Jesus for everything and not get caught up in what other people look as the needs of their, of their, of their body or their need to be liked by others. There are those who say to live a simple life means other things as well. For some people, living a simple life means to, uh, like, like we were saying, not to be affected by what other people say. To some, living a simple, particularly the brother, to live a simple life means to live a life that's non-conformed, where your minds are not conformed to what the world has to say about not just how we dress and how we do things, but how we think about things that God would have us to do. The brethren have long been known as a separate people who wanted to, and we dressed differently for a long time to show that we were different from the rest of the world. One of the things that, that I like best about our brethren heritage, there, there, there's a lot to like there, but one of the things I've always liked is that, as you may know, the brethren have long taught that the taking or the swearing of oaths is inappropriate. So the next time you're elected president of the United States and they ask you to swear to uphold the Constitution, as a brethren, maybe it'd be better if you affirm. Because the brethren have taught that we should live a life so open, so honest, that we don't have to, quote, swear to God that we promise to do something. That our yes means yes and our no means no. And there's no attempt to, to deceive people anywhere. So for some people, that's what the simple life means, is to live this open life where what we do and what we say is what we believe. The second habit we may want to be working on is the habit of solitude. And I don't necessarily, and this was a difficult one for me to understand, because he's not necessarily talking about being by ourselves all the time. That's what's driving a lot of people crazy right now about, about this, about this the stay-at-home order. But the solitude he's talking about is the ability to be alone with yourself for small periods of time. Did you know? Did you know they've done studies? And that a large number of people in our culture would rather feel pain than have to sit and think and be alone with themselves. They did this study where they set it up where 
They ask men and women to sit at a table for 15 minutes and just think. Not get up and walk around, not pull out their cell phone and, and, and start to play Angry Birds or Solitaire or something or text somebody, but just sit and think about their life for 15 minutes. Or they could give themselves what they called a mild shock. And did you know that more than half the people in that experiment Rather than sit and think about their own thoughts and think about whatever they were thinking about, chose to give themselves a shock. One guy in particular, th this was exorbitant, this was the worst one, but in 15 minutes, one guy shocked himself 190 times. He, he evidently couldn't stand, there was something within him that he wasn't at peace with. So, and maybe that's a good way to describe what this discipline is, is to be at peace with ourselves so that we can sit and think about things in Jesus, in our family, in our friends, without being in competition with anybody else, without thinking we had to prove anything to anybody else without regretting anything, any demon from our past or any negative thing from our past. It's a discipline, it's a spiritual discipline, it's a habit to get into to be able to sit and enjoy your thoughts in communion with Jesus Christ. The third of these habits that we should be cultivating is submission. And I know submission has a bad name in our culture. But basically what we're talking about here as a spiritual discipline is to the ability to lay down the burden of always needing to get our own way. And it is. I don't know if you've thought about that, but if you're the kind of person that likes to have your own way, you know that that is a terrible burden to carry. We need to cultivate this idea that we trust in Jesus and we worry about doing things His way rather than our way. And rather than tell other people around us that they need to do things our way. I hate, I hate to say it this way, but one of the reasons why Christianity across this country is in trouble today, and, and by in trouble, I mean the number of people who, who profess to be participating Christians is lower than it's been at any time in our history. And they talk, they've, they've gone out and they've done studies and asked people why they have a negative opinion of Christians. And it's in a lot of cases because Christians have come across as being judgmental and wanting their own way in so many things rather than accepting other people and rather than sub being submissive to how other people see some things. Now, of course, there are some things that were taught in the Bible that are non-negotiable. But there are other things that we insist on our way that sometimes maybe aren't that important. We'll get, to, we'll get back to that thought here in a little bit. Basically, what this comes down to is we need to treat other people with love. We're not to act like we're better than other people, as, as some Christians do. And I'm not asking you to yell out any names here or anything like that, but we could all list Christians who, who thought they were better than other people. So we're not asking you to think you're better. We're asking you, through these habits, to actually be better than a lot of people around you. The fourth part, the fourth habit, is going to be an easy one to talk about, and we have talked about it a lot, and that's service. Love can be shown through our service to others. And we could sit here and just go through a long list of what the people in this church have done to serve other people, even before this situation that we're in right now. We could talk about disaster relief. We could talk about our men's fellowship. We could talk about our ladies' aides and their, their meetings. 
There's been all kinds of service, but I've seen an increase in the service that people are providing for other people who need it during this time, and that's exciting for me to see. Wednesday evening in our Bible study, we, we were sort of addressing this topic, and we used the scripture from 1 Corinthians to try to get people to, to discuss. Uh, and, and if you haven't had an opportunity to join us on Wednesday or, or Sundays, I, I would urge you to do that, because we, we, people are starting to feel a little more comfortable uh, talking through the technology. And the, the scripture we were talking about comes from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8. Be careful, however, that the exercise of your rights does not become a stumbling block to the weak. For if someone with a weak conscience sees you with all your knowledge, and, and it was specifically about eating meat offered to idols, if they see you doing that, that person may be emboldened to eat what's sacrificed to idols. So we were talking about this idea that out of this love that we're talking about as a spiritual discipline, out of doing what's best for other people, there are some times that if people see us do something, even though it's perfectly right for us, it might not be for them. We were talking about things like church attendance. Maybe, maybe you're at a point in your Christian walk that being in church every single Sunday, maybe there's a good, maybe, I, I find it hard to imagine there could be a reason you wouldn't want to be in church on Sunday. But maybe you're not called to do that. But other people see that and they say, look, that person says they're a Christian. If they don't go to church, I don't need to go to church. We talked about things like social drinking. Uh, maybe for you, one drink now and then is, I don't know, maybe, uh, personally, I choose not to do this, but maybe for you, you do. But if somebody sees you do that, that has a problem with alcohol, that could lead to a, 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 a ruination for them. And we talked about several situations where we are called out of love for our brothers and sisters to give up our rights to be of aid to them. That's what this scripture is talking about. Develop these habits. Be a disciple through your love through your service, through your, what, however, whatever S we were talking about here, other people need to know that because you follow Jesus Christ, you're going to treat them with love and respect. as we go out into the world, but as we go out into our lives, 
in this time of stay at home and, and threat of coronavirus, may others know that we are Christians by how we treat them, by the decisions we make to treat them as they need to be treated. Father God, be with us in the coming week. May all we do, may all we say, may all of our actions point people to you. Through the Spirit and through your Son. Amen.